in the way that podcasts are like, I was totally there for that conversation with my friends. No, I just listened to my friends talk in my ears. You were there in our hearts. <laughs> Welcome to Stark Squad Pod, a media podcast full of friendship, feelings, and Stark. I'm Nicole Sweeney. My name is Marines. And we are joined today by a, a very important member of our found family, Aww. Sari Riley. <laughs> That's the sweetest introduction ever. <laughs> yes, I'm Sari Riley. I work on Crash Course with Nicole, which is how I stumbled upon her in my life. And then <laughs> I also co-host the podcast Cooler Than Homework with both of you. And I co-host the podcast SciShow Tangents. We invited Terry here today to talk about found families, as you probably guessed from that introduction. And it is my job now to define found families, as in the families that are found. But also, <laughs> I, as I was like looking up the like TV trope and everything like that, it also is called family of choice. And there are like psychological definitions to families of choice. And these are families people who come together and provide a support system that usually you get from a family, but it comes now from this group of people that you have either stumbled along the way or have chosen. I think that works. <laughs> yes, that is great. So we're talking today about that, but in fiction. Hooray. Uh, I mean, like also maybe a little bit, you know, in our, our real lives, like a little therapy session. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is always such a weird place to start with the trope episodes, but I still think it's useful as a kind of general baseline. We're starting with our favorite question. Did you like it? Do you typically tend to gravitate towards found family stories? Is that something that is your shit? Yes, absolutely. I feel like we'll have similar feelings about this. So <laughs> be ready for an episode full of I love this. Um, <laughs> but yes, found family stories are extremely my shit. It is a surefire way to make me more invested in a story if even just two characters decide to bond with each other and stick with each other no matter what and fight and make up in the way that families do. Uh, and to keep the therapy light, TM, um, <laughs> I think that I contextualize my own life a lot through found family because I love my family, but we're not the most touchy feely of, of families. And so I don't uh, typically share a lot of my life with my family. So I end up sharing a lot of my life with my friends, including like bouncing off problems off of them or asking them for advice. And so whether that's because I watched a lot of Pokemon growing up and I was like, yeah, I don't need parents. I have friends or <laughs> just because <laughs> this is the human that I am and the way that I've lived my life. That's how it's happened. So yes, love it for me. And in media. <laughs> I also love it. And I feel like in other episodes where we've done tropes, it's been like, if it's done well, I usually like this thing. But found family is a thing that even when I'm like in bad media, found family can forgive a lot for me. I'm like, oh, I know the plot was terrible, but look at that family. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> that's where I'm coming from. And I think that <laughs> to therapy a little bit myself, I have a very big and very close family. So it's never like I was like, I need a found family. But that kind of dynamic and, and being close with my family means that I want a family everything. Like, you're my friends. You're also my family. You're my co-worker's family. So <laughs> I don't know if that's like part of it. Uh, it. But also, you know, being a first generation American means that there was a lot of like cultural gaps and things that I, you know, parents just don't understand. Uh, so I feel like anytime that you have anything where, you know, parents don't understand or there's something else my interest my hobbies were all outside of like things that they did so I gathered my people around me um, so it's very cool to see that reflected in media in any sort of way yeah I am also very much all in on found family so that's the that's the baseline for this conversation I agree with everything that Mari was saying about the way in which that can even supersede all the things that I don't like about a piece of media that if the found family is strong, then I'm like, well, this is good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, maybe everything else about this is bad, but this is really good. So that's cool. I think for me, it has a lot to do with also my love of kind of familial stories as well. I think that it is mostly just that I appreciate 
any story that feels like it's valuing non-romantic relationships as being equally as or if not more important than romantic relationships just because I feel like I felt like I was always so inundated with stories prioritizing romantic relationships and as somebody who I don't know just in general didn't date much the periods in my life where a romantic relationship was my most important relationship were very very few and far between uh, in the 31 years that I have now been alive and so having stories prioritize other kinds of relationships is a thing that I am generally going to be on board for. I feel like there's a thousand different directions that we can go with this, but Sari, you launched right into Pokemon, and because that is a thing that I have like no background with, I am fascinated, and I would love for you to talk to me more about the found family in Pokemon. What am I, what am I missing out on by not having this this background with Pokemon? So the premise of the Pokemon universe is absolutely wild, but the absolute dream for a 12 year old child <laughs> to the extent that some people love Harry Potter, where you get like your letter to Hogwarts. I wanted to live in a world where I could become a Pokemon trainer because according to the anime and I think the video games, when you turn 10 years old, you meet with the professor in your town that studies Pokemon because they all have one apparently and you get your starter and then your mom just gives you a pair of running shoes and you go off into the world <laughs> with your Pokemon <laughs> as your best friend. And then you travel and you capture more and you make friends with other people. And they're just like bands of kids roaming around, battling each other, collecting items, making friends. That's all they do. <laughs> and, and so specifically in the anime, the main character is Ash Ketchum, who has been 10 for like 20 years, which is great <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the way that cartoons work. And he finds friendships with the first two gym leaders that he sort of def like has to battle. So that that is always interesting. I don't know. You have to collect eight badges. Ash is on a journey to become like the Pokemon master. And so he becomes friends with Misty and Brock and they have adventures together and they learn about each other and they learn about friendship and they learn about Pokemon. That's a very vague description <laughs> to save myself from going into all the gory details. But I feel like it really emphasized taking care of each other because mm. like many stories that involve found families, it finds a way to remove the parents very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so these kids had to be very uh, independent and cook their own meals and Sometimes that was camping. Sometimes it was like figuring out new towns together. Sometimes it was facing off against adults who were trying to steal their Pokemon and be mean. And they just like got into all these sticky situations and got out together. And sometimes they fought and then they made up or sometimes they made a bad decision. But when they when they led with their hearts, then everything turned out OK. That's beautiful. That, that was my ramble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for giving me this very important Pokemon rundown. I, that was like a weird detour on my part. <laughs> but <laughs> having having led with the, the Pokemon facts, I will now bring us back around to what are in some of your other, besides Pokemon, <laughs> favorite <laughs> examples of found families in media? I'll name one that I know Nicole has also been watching recently. I think I'm on season six now of Elementary, um, which is the Sherlock Holmes adaptation where uh, Joan Watson is played by Lucy Liu. So it's gender swapped and it takes place in New York. And Sherlock and Joan have the best friendship slash co-consulting detectiveship ever. And when they say they love each other, my whole heart melts. And that show really does emphasize the idea of like, this is not a romantic relationship. The characters have declared to each other multiple times that like they are each other's family. And yes, I agree. It's really, really beautiful. I am also going to pick one that I know everybody here has watched just so we can squeal about it together. But anytime <laughs> that this comes up, the, the place my brain goes to first is always Firefly. Mm -hmm. I think it also stands out to me because I love groups of people who are really good at their like one job and like, mm -hmm. you know, coming together and to do to be really great at something. So, you know, you've got the the captain and, and the 
mechanic and all of that jazz. And then they're all doing their jobs, but they come together to find this family and they save each other from danger. And it is just absolutely beautiful. There's a lot wrong with that show, I guess, in retrospect, or it's dated or whatnot. I rewatched it pretty recently. Um, but the found family truly just stands the test of time. I love that point too about the ways in which found family stories can be about people like coming together with their different areas of expertise. Uh, it kind of makes me think of some of the things that you pointed out actually on the Night Circus episode, which is another example of there's a found family component. And there's also the component where you have this cast of characters who are all really, really good at something. And that is a story with actual magic, but also part of what makes the story sort of magical, like part of what makes that magic happen is the way in which all of these people are kind of supporting each other with their respective gifts. And I think this is true of Firefly as well, the way the ways in which they like are working together to support each other and they are all kind of better because they have this role that they can play in the sort of family unit, but also like, you know, in the crew, because these are both relationships that are partially professional relationships in addition to being found fa family relationships. Um, but like the way that those two things kind of go together in those spaces, I think is really cool and interesting. And again, as an adult who <laughs> has a, a lot of close friends who are also my coworkers and like that kind of thing, <laughs> it is, it's cool to see, obviously, and idealized and exaggerated version of that, but to see that presented in media. Yeah, I think to that point, one thing that I like about found family stories and all the ones that we've mentioned so far, they all inevitably have a subplot of someone needing help or someone like refusing to ask for help and then finally getting it because one of their friends like knows how to do this thing or is patient enough or kind enough to like sit through this difficulty or uh, share a skill with them. And I think that is really powerful to see in media, both as kids and adults watching these kind of shows, because we live in this really individualistic society where it's like, you must become good at the thing. But a lot of found family media, I feel like, emphasizes uh, teamwork and and like you don't have to be good at everything because you have this network of friends uh, to catch you when you fall or to like make a home for you when you need time to rest. And also someone who has a lot of friends slash coworkers, like navigating those relationships can be tricky, but seeing it modeled in media can reassure you that these kind of things are okay and that tricky situations happen and that you make, make it through them because these fictional people that I've watched on TV have made it through. So why well, can't I? <laughs> this has made me think about how the media that we're talking about and we'll continue to talk about shows us or explains to us the found family or how we get um, pulled into that story. So for instance, in Firefly, I think you really start to understand the dynamics of the found family because Jane betrays like Simon and River or he starts to. And so I feel like, I mean, you see it all along the way that they're working together, but that moment when he's betraying them and Mal is on Simon and River's side, you really start to understand like how Mal runs his ship. And then that, I don't know, for me, that's the moment where I was like, yes, family. Um, especially because <laughs> um, like J Mal forgives Jane, like he gets like brought back into the fold. So I, I wonder if like there is a pattern or if the media that we um, consume is about forming the family. Is it like these separate people come together before your eyes or is it these people were together all along or like Sarah is saying, like watch these people figure out something new or somebody teaches somebody something or like in Firefly, somebody betrays um, a member of the family. Uh, so all of those like different ways that you can um, show the family is really interesting to me. I agree. And that reminds me a little bit of uh, the TV show Community, which is also one of my favorite found. I love a bunch of TV shows, I guess, that are found family related. <laughs> it is different in that Firefly kind of sets you off in the middle of this. Like this is a crew that has already worked together and Simon and River are the new people to it. But Community mm -hmm. assembles a study group of community college students from different backgrounds under the loose premise that they're all in the same Spanish class. And Jeff Winger, the main character, wanted to hit on Britta 
uh, who is another character. And so he like faked a Spanish study group, but she then invited a bunch of people from their Spanish class to actually study. And so they're, they're brought together by that. And through six seasons, go through ridiculously wild antics like paintball on campus. And so you see the ways that their relationships with each other grow and change and like Troy and Abed's relationship. This is where I found out who Donald Glover was, was through um, Troy Barnes on Community. And he is so funny. But like seeing Troy and Abed's relationship develop throughout the series and like seeing the writers latch on to that too, where it's like, here are these two characters that maybe in the first episode, you wouldn't have guessed that they would have made such a great duo, but like between the actors and the characters and the storylines mm-hmm. that emerged and that that feels also true to real life is like seeing the ways that people just click with each other even though they were complete strangers at the start. I also love that show and I that's a really interesting example too because in the later seasons when the show is not as good <laughs> there's <laughs> a there's certainly an argument to be made that changes kind of behind the scenes had some impact on the the quality of the later seasons but i think the biggest thing is that as they lost some of the core members of that family the show stopped working as well and like it tried to shuffle new people in but the thing about that show that was magical was that particular group of people and watching that group of people grow together and so it just didn't work as well once you started losing members of that family. One of the bad things that I I like mostly because of the found family is, are you ready for this? Nobody's going to be surprised. The Fast and the Furious franchise. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yes, it's good. It's like a big dumb action movie about cars, but really it's about the family who are doing crime together at the heart of it. And It does go from movie to movie, like it adds people and people don't come back and all of that jazz. But none of that matters to me in this context, because even though I really like the found family and this idea of like, you know, uh, we're going to do crime together and we're going to, you know, have each other's back no matter what. And you're rooting for them, even though they most definitely are the criminals. Uh, it's not that deep. <laughs> so, you know, like if you're losing people and in, in the next movie, it's like, this is part, you're part of the family now. I'm like, yeah, they are. And I'm just like <laughs> rooting, <laughs> rooting for the concept of the found family in this movie, but not necessarily invested in individual characters, if that makes sense. That makes perfect sense and i think that it has a lot to do with the foundation on which the thing is built and i think like you you led that with a thing that you like even though parts of it are bad and but the found family kind of outweighs that but i think that that is also wrapped up in how they get away with it you know it's like it's fine you can shuffle through who is in the family because the thing is you know it's all so outlandish and silly in a way that it that makes it still work as long as you still have that found family at the core of the thing. I'm trying to think of something that I like that's similar to that because I'm sure there's something out there, but nothing is jumping to mind because usually the way that I think of found family stories is like, okay, it's the family, but then across the media or over the course of the watching or playing or reading the thing, we're going to do like a deep, deep emotional dive into each character and they're going to have like you're going to break off certain members of the family and have have deep emotional development. But the idea that it's just like that is not the point necessarily. Mm-hmm. And it's just like the family is the point. The fact that you are welcome in this thing and now we're going to like go fast and do crime <laughs> is is the point. And, and that's I don't know. Very cool. And I think I would. I have to like something that's like that, but I just can't think of anything right now. It is really funny to me, though, that both of the first two examples that Mari mentioned are basically groups of people who are f- found crime families. That's like, <laughs> that's what fine clients do. They're, well, they're also criminals. I was going to say so. that, um, like, that feeling of it, it's familiar, like the the. Fast and the Furious kind of setup, probably not to that extreme because Fast and the Furious is also kind of one of a kind for how long it's gone on and doing this (laughs) sort of thing. But heist stories in general, any any sort of like, let's all get together and do a heist is like a really quick way to be like, well, now we all care about each other a lot. Like this is life or death. Right. Because our fates are are intertwined now in in a way that, yes, yes. If you go down, like we go down together because we did crime together. Right. 
<laughs> Correct. <laughs> so it's like shorthand for found family, and it's exciting. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> Crying families, A-OK by me. <laughs> this reminds me of a different TV show, always a TV show, um, called Dead Like Me, in which the found family is a bunch of people who have died through strange and unusual ways where the main character dies because a toilet exploded on a space station and then the toilet seat like came down and struck her in the head and obliterated her and because she was a, like a certain death in the universe she becomes she becomes recruited to be part of a, a family of grim reapers and what they have to do is go find people who are going to die of weird and violent things and then extract their souls right beforehand so that they don't feel the death and then they can like pass on but over the course of this she tries to like delay people's death or save people's lives and in doing so like causes more death because the universe has to be in balance it it has its own internal rules but is another example of sort of these people are stuck together because they all have Mm. to watch death all the time and they all have no power to change that necessarily they're just like every day is watching people die all the time um which isn't the most positive thing necessarily (laughs) in the way that doing elaborate dangerous heists isn't always the most like like team of superheroes thing they're not all like fighting for justice they're they're showing up and doing this thing because they sort of have to Mm -hmm. or because they've decided that they all have to it's another interesting premise i think for a found family is this idea that you are all bound together by a mission. Yeah. Even if that mission isn't good or like good in quotes. So we've been like talking about this and kind of around this, but this idea of like why the people you are watching have a found family or in a found family. So yes, like heist or or a combined mission or, you know, everybody's dead or whatnot. But also, so when I was like looking up definitions and stuff, it was usually like, usually an orphan, but that's not necessarily always true. So like, where is the family or is the family there? But what brings them together? Like some sort of secret. Or I was thinking of, we did this on the podcast too. I didn't finish watching it, but we did Runaways. And so uh-huh. their families are all present, but they're all super villains so all of the kids come together with like this you know like joint mission of trying to figure out what's going on and they have their own powers and all of that so the families can be present but like whatever pulls the people together like that's always look interesting to look at we talked about this when we had this precise assemblage of people talking about runaways but <laughs> the, <laughs> the one of the big most disappointing things about that show is the way in which they have tried to give the parents parents too much nuance and i feel weird being like no you did nuance and that was bad but actually (laughs) i really do feel that way about that show in part because like i think that giving the kids a clear-cut mission of you know no our parents are definitely objectively bad and so now we must band together to turn our backs on them uh, would have made the show so much stronger and so much better and whatever but in a way that goes back to everything that Sari was saying about having a found family that comes together around a mission, regardless of whether or not that mission is good or bad. But it's like it is about choosing something about yourself first. So in this case, that choice is I, as a teenager in a big pivotal coming of age moment, am choosing to not become like my parents because I am seeing their actions and I am deciding that I find them morally bad. And so the choice that I am making about who I want to be is not that. And it just so happens that as I am making this choice, there, you know, I have this group of peers who are also making this choice. And so that's the thing that is bringing us together in this moment. And I think that there's something really beautiful about that idea and like that version of a found family or a family of choice the the fundamentally differentiating thing about sort of a found family versus your like blood family or whatever is that component of choice and so having this family that is built not around okay i was born into it and so i am bound to these people because because of blood because of whatever because of some things that i didn't ask for some things that i didn't choose like the having this found family that is predicated on 
I am making a choice about who I want to be and how I want to move through the world. And these are the people who like are going to enable me to do that. And like, we are going to enable each other to do that and support each other in becoming the people that we want to be. I don't know. It's fucking beautiful. I love that (laughs) so much. I'm sitting here just like not snapping because I don't want it to come out on the the recording, (laughs) but like snapping in my heart. Especially I love the idea of like you make a choice first in in the story. And not that it necessarily happens that way in the story that you're reading, but it is such a cool way to look at things. Even going back to like something like Firefly where, you know, Captain Malcolm Reynolds said like he lost the war, but he was going to live his life a certain way on the edge. He was never going to be under anybody's rule. And he found these other people who were were willing to do that as well. And so they, I mean, sure, they were doing some crime, but they had their moral code. So it was very much like I made this decision for myself. And then I found the family that could go along on this adventure with me. Uh So great. I love it so much. I want to pick apart every found family story this way now. Like, what was the choice? (laughs) Well, also, in you talking about that, I think we talked about this on the She-Ra episode as well, because Adora made the choice to leave the Horde. Like, as soon as she realized that the family that raised her because she was orphaned and then um, Hordak adopted her and taught her how to be an extreme military force, basically. As soon as she realized that was attacking innocent people, she made the choice to leave. And that's how she found her new fam. Uh, that's how she found her newfound family or her family of choice was like, ah, I can be with the princesses because they're actually trying to save people. And that's what I'm into. But yes, I also love this idea and now want to map out everything and be like, what is the choice that they made? What is the choice that they're making independently and together? Because I think that's a really beautiful thing about found families too. And I think I'm just rehashing what you're what you said, Nicole, in slightly different words. But it's worth it. It's worth it. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> Like the idea that we are all individuals making choices about our lives, but sometimes those choices align up with the way other people see the world or want to do crime or uh, (laughs) fight for justice or pass their Spanish class or do whatever. (laughs) Then you start making choices not only for yourself, but like considering other people which is a very powerful human thing. And like that, that I feel like is part of family is making choices, considering other people, not just yourself Mm -hmm. and like seeing the ways in which when found families are done really well, like seeing the ways that all these characters are fully developed and have their own wants and needs. And in the runaways, a case they all have come from different families and they all have different um, desires for their future but the thing that overrides that all is like the I don't want to be a super villain and so it's worth running away from it all and then they found a group of friends to do that too yeah I, Runaways is such an interesting example of this too because you have the like the clear rejection of the family of origin and the idea that you have a choice about who you're going to be and the ways in which a family of origin can feel constraining and and like a family of choice can feel kind of liberating. And I think that 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 dynamic is present in most found family stories in some capacity or another. It just happens to be particularly prevalent in runaways because you have the because they are runaways. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it's uh, very baked in there. But like having that dynamic of of at what point are you making the choice? Is the choice about you? Is the choice about these other people? And I think it's probably not really an either or dichotomy either. You know, like I think that it's probably always going to be a little bit of both, but just to varying degrees. It's a trope episode, so I have to bring up my favorite book ever. I mean, not ever. Some of my favorite books ever, uh, The Fairyland series by Catherine <laughs> M. Valenti. And it is definitely a found family story, I think. But it's interesting because at the very beginning of the story, um, the it, September, who's the main character, her father is fighting a war. It's like an unnamed war. Um, so he's away and all of the women have gone to work. So her mom works where the job that her father left, basically, and he's at the war. So she's very alone. And she's in the middle, I think, of like Kansas or something somewhere in the Midwest. It's very gray. It's very like bad. And a basically a fairy appears to her and is like, do you want to run away? Do you want to leave your parents and come have an adventure? So her choice is to leave her parents who are not 
not bad to her. So it almost breaks your heart immediately that she's like, yeah, this is this is bad. This is stupid. Like, I want to go. And her dad's off at war and her mom is working. And the story kind of comes back around to that. She has to come to terms with like being ready to go home and understand what's going on. But that choice of having an adventure is what put pulls everything else along and once she's in fairyland she's just finding all of these other people who are willing to go on this adventure adventure with her and it's very much like almost in in uh, a way that she's like stumbling through it and she's just making decisions like i don't know usually in fairy tales you do this and she goes along (laughs) (laughs) and um so so the people who are with her are like cool you know so she's found adventurers right along with her and that's the choice which is kind of a broad one um but it's it's up against that background of like normal life is boring and then you know the 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 real bottom line is that fairyland is also not easy and it's kind of mean and magic and fairy tales are often dark as well the idea i've never thought of this story that i've read so many times as you know september making that choice to leave her family and then finding another family in sort of like a brighter other magical location mari you were saying beforehand i think you kind of mentioned this at the top but that when you were looking up definitions for mm-hmm. found families or family of choice you found some definitions that you were like not satisfied with because there were some maybe boundaries that you reject. And I'm curious what those things were. Well, the, it, I always look at TV tropes um, to kind of start there. And the first line that it says is that the character starts out as conveniently an orphan, which, I mean, it's not saying all the time, but it says often, so, which made me think about, we kind of talked about, you know, where's the family and, of origin and like what's going on there. And then it made me think immediately about Buffy and whether, mm. you know, I think at first they are just like a big group of friends. But as time goes on, it most certainly feels like a family. And Buffy has her mother there. But, you know, Joyce uh, passes away in one of the seasons. And or also whatever. like sucked as a mother. And sucked as a mother. Correct. <laughs> So all of the ways that orphan doesn't necessarily have to be a thing. You can have uh, villain parents, as we talked about. You can have absent parents. Um, You know, your parents can give you a pair of running shoes and say, go, be free, catch some monsters, uh, which is a thing (laughs) that I learned today about Pokemon. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And the other thing that it was pretty strict on was the fact that, like, it has, there's, like, some line between, you know, found family and just, like, really close close friends, friends forged by Mm. fire, you know, like the kind of friends that that go on an adventure. So I don't it doesn't really say what that line is. It's very insistent that there is a line between like close friends and a found family. I don't know if you guys feel that way. Or for me, as I was sitting here trying to think of examples, it was more that I would come up with an example of a found family that would then like veer off into romance i thought of a few like that that i was like Uh found family oh no they end up as like you know uh mom and dad basically at the end so uh, (laughs) i don't know do you guys have feelings about like the difference between a found family and a group of friends yeah i feel like it is a line that exists more in real life than media almost in that friends in real life you have different levels of closeness to different people and you only have like if you think of yourself as the protagonist of a story or whatever, uh, <laughs> you have people that you're closer to and who would be recurring characters. And then you have people who would be like once a season show up. Um, <laughs> and so I feel like everyone who is portrayed as being close friends in media. Like there is no line between close friends and found family, but maybe there's a line between friends and found family that I could acknowledge because Mm -hmm. like uh, to the point you were making a a little while ago, Nicole about community, like I wouldn't consider those outsiders. I say outsiders. (laughs) I wouldn't consider the, the folks that they tried to incorporate into the group, like the side characters that that became main characters. Like um, the Dean had a more reoccurring role. Senior Chang had a more reoccurring role and things like that, but they didn't feel like part of the found family because that's not how the relationships were established. Mm -hmm. And not to say that I don't think people's friendships can grow and change because that's obviously what happens in real life and in media. But 
Yeah, that that's the only place like I could see a line is if like there's a tenuous connection to someone and people are like, ah, oh, they're like brother and sister because they had one argument. Then I'd be like, eh, but then he <laughs> left forever. Uh, so <laughs> write your fanfic, but I don't buy it. It's not canon. <laughs> I think it, it, it is something like if you're talking about found family or family of choice, I think that it is a term that like immediately communicates something to you. But that term like outside of like media and fiction, like family is such a big term and it can mean so many different things. And family doesn't even necessarily mean closeness. But when you're talking about a found family, you are definitely talking about closeness. So, you know, I have cousins who are family and I have friends who are closer to me and better um, family than cousins. You know, so in real life, it does get very messy. Um, in fiction, I think that if you do have, you know, the, like I, I get what uh, Sari is trying to say, like you can have just friends. But once you start getting into the level of like close friends, that is kind of interchangeable to me w- with found family, I guess. Yeah, I would agree with that. That makes sense to me. I don't know why this particular part of the conversation reminded me of this. Have you guys seen the meme uh, that's like sometimes a family? I'm like looking them up. Sometimes a family is a bunch of kids and a boy illicitly teaching them to Defense Against the Dark Arts. And this is like (laughs) a mild version of Found Family, like obviously Harry Potter. But I feel like there's a period of time either on Twitter or Tumblr where I saw a bunch of these where it was like sometimes a family is and then like outlandish descriptions of a bunch of characters and people were trying to like allude to a bunch of different shows. I don't know. I love it. Maybe our found family is the memes we made along the way. (laughs) (laughs) I just also realized, I don't know why you saying about this meme made me realize, but that you were also on the Avatar episode. Like you've specifically, Sari, been on a lot of episodes where we talk about found family. Mm -hmm, It's Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's because I'm so enthusiastic about them. It's like, yeah, I'll talk about this thing. I'll love this thing. (laughs) I have so many thoughts and feelings about it. This is sort of kind of related to this, but speaking of the examples that uh, things that we have already talked to Sari about, but I think that there is a lot of overlap between found family stories and coming of age stories. Obviously, we have mentioned quite a few adult found family stories on this episode, Firefly, The Night Circus, um, Community. I guess The Night Circus is kind of on the edge there, but regardless, there are also avatar runaways those stories part of the found family there goes back to this question of the the choices that are being made you know the 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 choices that are being made about how you want to move through the world and who you want to be and kind of assembling your your team of people that are going to like help you be this person that you want to be and there so i think that there does tend to be a lot of overlap between found family stories and coming of age stories uh which is another thing that is that we have established time and again is extremely (laughs) all of our shit (laughs) i think the difference that you just mentioned is really important too because like the things that we were talking about with regards to people like lending their skills to each other that can happen across all ages but i think is more common or feels like it's more common in found family stories where everyone is a fully formed adult and like has their thing that they're good at. Whereas with found family stories that involve children, sometimes it is like a bunch of kids bonding together as equals. But also, um, like in the example of Steven Universe, the found family involves like parental roles and child roles which is interesting like there there are mentors and mentees in steven universe specifically like steven is the son of a crystal gem which is an alien species and a human and he is co-parented but mostly parented by three crystal gems that used to work for his mom and fled their homeland to go live and protect earth Um, And like his dad shows up every once in a while and runs a car wash and is like ostensibly a good dad. But the found family that the show focuses on is Stephen and Garnet and Pearl and Amethyst, who are his pseudo moms, basically, but also training him to be a warrior, also training him to help protect the earth and his human friend, Connie, who's just like this delightful bookworm, um, but also extremely brave. And in that found family, there are people who know how to do the things helping others grow up and like 
a sibling relationship, but also like a parental relationship. It, it's reminding me that found family stories can also involve like I, I know people joke like you someone can be the mom friend. Uh, make sure everyone drinks water when they go out or things like that. But that that happens in stories, too. Mm-hmm. I'm curious because this is something that we all love. If there are any examples of found family stories that didn't work for you that you could share? This is a really good question. And I'm sure that I have really earnest answers to this question. But instead, I'm going to answer with a like a really, really stupid answer. And that is <laughs> this most recent season of The Challenge was has been viscerally <laughs> unpleasant to watch. All right. So here we go. Uh, and I know if you even if you've watched The Challenge, you're like, Nicole, literally, what the fuck are you talking about? I love this. Do not stop. Settle in, <laughs> Settle in friends. So. This most recent season of the challenge was set up with opposing teams. There was like the US team and then the UK team, basically because in recent years, they've had more and more UK players coming on. There's all sorts of like weird mechanics. There's like eliminations. And, you know, when the team loses, you have to send somebody in to be eliminated and like that whole thing. Very early on, an alliance across the two teams was formed. People were no longer like they weren't part of their individual team anymore. They were sort of part of this like across the teams thing that truly never made any fucking sense to me other than like people just trying to get to the finale, uh, which I I guess I get. But also the UK team in particular was like cannibalizing its own team in service of its alliance to members of the American team in this way that was like, like, what are you like? Why are you doing this? It's like their their objective is ultimately for them to win and not you like those like I I understand that they are your friends, but also this is a game and like your actual team is who you should be having this sense of camaraderie with. But the like weird cross team alliance, which also consisted of a bunch of people who I fucking hate. So there was that (laughs) uh, aspect of it. Anyway, all of this is to say that the reason that this season was so viscerally unpleasant to watch is the way in which this alliance of terrible people became this like found family that controlled the game sucked and I hated it so (laughs) because they broke the game with their control over the game because it didn't really matter which team won or lost or whatever it was always the you know the people who were not part of their little group were always going to go into elimination and it sucked and I hated it and so that's my that was my immediate <laughs> in my bones answer to the question of a found family that I hate. It's these like 10 challengers on this season of the challenge. <laughs> I'm trying to think and this is a half formed answer. So I deserve all the, the people adding me <laughs> if they choose to argue. <laughs> this is instead of don't at me. This is like, go ahead. You can at me. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> it's because theater kids have a lot of feelings. This so rent. Mm. I know. No, <laughs> I it's like fine. I don't. Have, I don't have any feelings for rent. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, are you ready to fight? No. <laughs> because I, I will back down and like lay down because it's not like a battle. This is not the hill I'm dying on. But like, just like scrolling through my Rolodex of of found family stories, rent is one where the songs are very catchy. And and I know it means a lot to a lot of people. This is me adding many asterisks to this. Uh-huh. But Mark is kind of annoying as a filmmaker. He's just like, <laughs> ah, my friends are dying. And so I'm going to interview you and like be a struggling filmmaker. His problems seem very small compared to everyone else's as they're living their lives. That's the hot take. But uh, in general, even though it's a found family, I feel like it is not one that strikes me at my core in any particular way. It's Mm -hmm. like a story that I watch and I know the songs. If I'm looking for a found family story that like can be very heartbreaking and has such like fraught relationships and also like high stakes and illness or death or things like that, like Sense8 hits that Mm -hmm. way, way better for me. Mm -hmm. And so Rent, even when I watched it first as a a middle schooler into, into musical theater, it was just like, cool. (laughs) Um, (laughs) so I don't know exactly what about it I didn't I didn't like but it was just like 
in the in the way that you have to over dramatize things for theater it felt i don't know like they they were turning the ordinary into the extraordinary in a way that didn't quite resonate with me and maybe this is like blasphemy growing up queer like it's after the aids crisis or things like that but yeah i'm afraid about being yelled at now <laughs> <laughs> a big uh Duh, one for me is Twilight, and I know it's romance, but they all grew up as brother and sisters in that house, and that was weird. Um, whatever little incesty thing that they were doing, and then like living together and all dating each other, weird. Uh, but my real That's such answer- a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love that answer. I change it. I also <laughs> don't like Twilight <laughs> and their weird couple family situation. <laughs> it's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the the books that I was thinking about that kind of sparked the question is the Raven Cycle books by Maggie Steve Otter. I think that they're coming out as a TV show, I want to say. So if you're not familiar, you might hear about them coming up here as, as they get uh, produced and released. But it is super big in the book community and on BookTube. And I read the first 2.5 of the four books and I just could not. But it's very much the same sort of thing. I, I haven't watched Rent, so I'm also not going to die on this hill. But you mentioned that like one of the characters, you know, wasn't your favorite or whatnot. And so I feel like if there is a character character especially like a main one who is annoying to you personally that kind of breaks the found family (laughs) yes Um, which was very much the case for me with the raven cycle like it was a bunch of like there was you know rich prep school boys and then the one girl who grew up on the other side of the tracks or whatnot and the dynamic was always so insufferable to me like her name is blue and the the main character like one of the first things that he does when he meets her is like blue that's a stupid name i'm gonna call you Jane and he calls her no. Jane for like yes for no. half the book <laughs> for like half the book and everyone's like oh it's so cute because they also it also develops into romance and I don't know just the whole no thing. that is not cute that's not it's cute. not it's not cute mm-hmm. it's not cute that made me think two things first of all one that is exactly why I hate the alliance on this season of the challenge which is that it is headed by <laughs> two of my least favorite people fuck those people but also the this made me think of the 100 which is another whatever found family coming of age it's got like all of those things going on at once and i think is my fast and the furious esque answer you know like there's <laughs> there's a lot of ways in which the show is trash and i know it's trash but look i just love these teens and they're little found they're trying so hard <laughs> and i'm rooting for them but that also had at one point uh, a, a there was a romantic plot where one of the characters insisted on calling another the um the female lead by a name that annoyed her and like that was played up as oh this is so cute and like it's no it's not cute it's not cute and i don't like it but otherwise i did enjoy the, <laughs> the 100 <laughs> no, like i really love the idea that we're ending this episode on found families with my very our very strong feelings that any time that there is a character who's calling somebody else by the wrong name it's stupid and it sucks uh, thanks for coming to our podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not endearing and you should not do it the end <laughs> Before we like wrap this up, I do actually want to talk about a couple more things that I particularly enjoyed, some things that we haven't really talked about. Battlestar Galactica is another show that has some like found family vibes that I enjoyed. It's been a bit since I last watched the show, so I, I don't know. I am also prepared to have somebody tell me that I'm wrong and it's bad, but I don't think anybody will. Uh, and <laughs> the other like weird, silly answer that I want to bring up, I mentioned this on an episode of Cooler Than Homework as a show that I loved as a child that reminds me a lot of Firefly, and that is Space Cases. <laughs> <laughs> I really I like I need the Nickelodeon equivalent of Disney Plus so that I can watch all the episodes of Space Cases and know if it lives on like if it will hold up to the very strong strong place that it lives in my heart but 
basically it's like Firefly, but if it were a kid's show and like more aliens. I also had one more thing that I wanted to say <laughs> that I thought of <laughs> over the course of this conversation. And maybe Mari will have another opinion about this. I'm very curious. As someone who plays video games, some of those video games have a rotating party that you can choose. So like in the way that Final Fantasy, you're battling monsters, but you get to choose who you battle monsters with. And eventually you have a roster of characters that's too big and you have to choose like four fighters. Um, The Persona video game series, which I have also played and I think talked about on this podcast in some capacity where your high school is solving mysteries and also doing like supernatural battles. You choose your, your characters to join the party. And I have very strong feelings about that headed into the game, depending on how the story goes and depending on how much I like the characters. So in the way that your your battle party is sort of a found family. And I know the cutscenes are the same no matter what, pretty much. But still, I have like strong emotional reactions to like not putting an annoying character in battle even if like i could do better with them just because i don't like they don't deserve to be there because i don't want them (laughs) to help my my little family of people like i don't want you to be my healer because you're a jerk and i don't want you to not get to like participate in the success um and so i'm just curious that goes back to mari's point too about the way in which like if you have a character that you don't like, that that can break the found family. That if mm-hmm. one of the members of the found family is a really insufferable character, that is the thing that will break it. Mm-hmm. The final thing that I had on my list that I hadn't mentioned were actually video games. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> at Dragon Age Origins is the it's the only Dragon Age I've played through. I want to eventually catch up or whatnot, but it's the same thing where I probably, to my own detriment, I, I pick according to whose dialogue I want to hear because even though the cutscenes and everything are the same as they're walking, the characters are like bantering back and forth. And so I just pick my favorites so I can hear what they're going to say. Say, um, instead mm-hmm. of being like strategically like, ooh, this person's stronger or has the best like armor or whatever. But absolutely, <laughs> you're in like any sort of like adventure open world games, you're like literally traveling together and you've got the mission and you're making the choices and all of that. So it is a found family that you are in some way like controlling. And that's really neat. And it's part of why I like those sorts of games. And of course, I have to mention The Witcher, because it is also coming out on on Netflix just pretty soon here. And the reason that I just cannot, like, I love the story so much, even though it's like super problematic, and it gets boring as the books go on. But it's Geralt and the girl Siri. So he, he, basically adopts her and he runs all over the the countries uh in the middle of a war to like find her rescue her protect her and so by the end you're just like oh my gosh this big bad monster hunter loves his little girl so much um so (laughs) and he and he um pulls other people in like you know obviously so it's not just the two of them but you know the family kind of grows from there so yes video games are actually really really awesome for having that experience but also with the added bonus of like making your own choices as well. I'm glad you play like that too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) It's like, I'm going to be with the people that I want to be with. If I have a choice, I would cut all the annoying characters out of my TV shows too. And just like have the people I like banter. (laughs) I mean, what is more found family than we're either going to all die together or we'll win. (laughs) 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 But it'll be the people we like. Mm -hmm. And on that note, Thank you for listening and being the people that we like. Thank you, Sari, for joining us. If you are enjoying this podcast, we would love it if you told your friends about it, rate and review it, or join our community on Patreon at patreon.com slash Stark Squad. We would love to hear all of your thoughts on found families, uh, any important ones that we left out, any terrible ones that we should know are bad that you want to yell about. (laughs) There will be a post dedicated to this episode up on StarkSquad.com, or you can find us all on Twitter at Stark underscore squad. I am at Sweeney Says. You can find me at my name is Marines. And I'm at C.E. Riley. This is a Stark Squad production. The show is edited by me and the music is by Stefan Chin. We'll be back in your feed again next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.